Hi, this is Stefan Gonick, international love coach and EFT practitioner from FindingTheLoveYouWant.com. Welcome to Love Talk Q&A, the place to be to get your questions answered about finding and keeping the love of your life. In this episode of Love Talk Q&A, I'd like to answer the following question. Stefan, my friends tell me that I'm being too picky, but I don't agree, so I would like your feedback. This is what I'm looking for in a man. I want a man who's handsome, smart, strong, funny, professional, like a doctor, a lawyer, or something like that, at least five foot, 10 inches tall. And then she goes on to a much longer list, but I'm just gonna go ahead and stop right there because we have, I think, already enough information. So, am I being too picky? So I find that tends to, ha uh, that question tends to come up in two different contexts, two different categories. There are people who they themselves are afraid they're being too, too picky. So they go, oh gosh, you know, I'm afraid I might be being too picky that, you know, that I'm wanting too much in a partner and they're the ones questioning themselves. Then there's ones like the person who submitted the question where her friends are telling her she's being too picky and she doesn't think she is. Okay, and then there's gonna be a third option. So let me start with the people who are worried about them being too picky. Uh, there are lots of people that I've encountered where I'm going, please be more picky. <laughs> You're not being anywhere near picky enough. Okay, so sometimes that comes from not feeling worthy, not feeling good enough, or other kinds of self-doubts and stuff like that. Sometimes it comes from not having a clear picture of what you're really wanting. Um, there's a lot of different factors that can lead to somebody actually not being picky enough. So there is that category. Now in terms of the other category, like the, the person who submitted the question, uh, I'm gonna start by giving you an example of myself and my wife. Before I met my wife, when I was looking for the love of my life, I created what I called a partner vision. Now, partner vision is simply a list of the things I'm looking for in a partner. And I can use that to sort of envision my partner. That's why it's called a partner vision. And that's basically what the, you know, the person who submitted the question was sharing with me, was her partner vision. So my partner vision, when I broke it all down, I counted up all the different things I was looking for. I had 35 items on my list. I was looking for 35 different things in, in my ideal partner, which that's a lot when you think about it, right? My wife-to-be, before she had met me, she had also created a partner vision, and she had 32 items on her list. So also a really big list, a lot of things on that list. In fact, longer than the list uh, that this person submitted to me. And when we met each other, and we got together, and we got to know each other, we, at one point we compared our lists, and we discovered that she matched 34 and a half out of the 35 items on my list, and I matched 31 and a half out of the 32 items on her list. Now, if you're like, most people when I share that, that those numbers, uh, if it's live, is I immediately people go, what was the half? And so, yes, there was a half, but what I, what I, what's much more important is to notice that she matched basically everything I was looking for. You know, one slight thing that was off, but everything I was looking for, and I matched everything that she was looking for. In fact, when we got together, we even said to each other, not only did you match everything on my list, you had other wonderful qualities that I didn't even think to put on my list that I'm grateful for as like a bonus, <laughs> you know? So was I being too picky? Was she being too picky? Clearly not. So being too picky, it's not about how long your list is, clearly. So what is it then? Is it possible to be too picky? Yes, it is possible to be too picky. So the person who submitted this question, your list is a mixture. There's ways that I don't think you're being too picky, and I think there are ways that, yes, I do think you're too, be, being too picky, like your friends. So let me make the distinction for you. What's not being too picky is to get clear on the characteristics of the person you're looking for in terms of who they are as a person, and also how you want the relationship to feel versus some of the things on your list were, which were very concrete data type items that weren't about the person per se, but it was about, um, you know, concrete um, quality. I mean, well, see, the word quality is not even right. So a quality of the person is, you know, what kind of person they are. But these are things like, you know, I want him to be at least 5'10". 
things like that. Uh, I've, I've seen other people say, well, I want him to live right local to me within a 10 minute drive. You know, I don't want to have to deal with anything longer than that. I want to be right, right here. Um, it could be, you know, the thing about the, I want him to be a professional person, like a doctor or a lawyer or something like that. These are uh, concrete criteria that's not about who your potential partner is as a person that can be overly restrictive and cause you to overlook somebody who doesn't match some of these concrete items, but who could be an incredible partner. So for instance, you want him to be 5'10". Really, does that have to be a hard and fast criteria? You know, what if he's 5'9"? What if he's 5'8"? And he's an amazing guy. Are you going to eliminate him because he's 5'10"? Are you going to see him from a distance and go, you know, I don't even want to go there because he's just not tall enough. You know, things like that. His height is not who he is as a person. Uh, his profession is not who he is as a person. And if you think, you know, I, I want somebody who has a profession, you might want to look a little deeper. It's like, well, what about a person with a profession is what I really want? What qualities in a person who has a profession is what I want? And can I find somebody with those qualities whether or not they have the profession? And same with location. You know, you want somebody within 10 minute drive of you? Well, what if they're a half hour drive? Is that really gonna eliminate the person? What if they're even an hour drive? And yeah, there's a bit of a hassle in the beginning, but it could be amazing. You know, the love of your life could be one hour away instead of 10 minutes away. Do you really want to restrict yourself in those kinds of concrete, what I think of as data kind of ways? So, so that's my answer. Uh, for you who submitted the question, I would eliminate those data type items. Forget him having a certain profession, forget his height, um, forget, you know, I don't remember if you had location on your list, but you know, those kind of things, I would take those off, but get clearer about the qualities of the person and the qualities of the interaction. So I'll give you some more concrete examples for myself of what I was looking for so you get an idea of what I'm talking about. Now, some of the things you said is, you know, I want him to to be handsome, so okay, sure, we have to be attracted to our partner. Um, that's not really a quality of a person, but that's kind of one of those, you know, has to be there, uh, you know, necessary but insufficient kind of things. Um, you said he has to be smart, he has to be funny, you know, those are qualities of a person, that's, those are good. Now, in my case, you know, I wanted somebody who, you know, was not just intelligent as a person, but I wanted somebody who, when we spoke, it was, we had stimulating conversations. Okay, so it's not just I want somebody who's intelligent, I, I did put that on my list, but in addition to the qualities that she had as an individual, I also put items on my list about the relational experience I wanted to have with her, the qualities of the interactions we had. So stimulating conversations was really important to me. I've had some best friends in my life where, you know, we'd get together to talk and it was never that we ran out of things to talk about, instead we always ran out of time. So lots of times these get together was end by going, Oh my God, look how late it is. You know, I wanted to have the same experience with, with my beloved that we never ran out of things to say. It was stimulating talking to each other. So that was important to me. Uh, I'm into personal growth, you know, not for myself as well as, you know, obviously helping other people. And so I wanted a partner who was into personal growth. And so we can share that, those kind of experiences together and go attend workshops and personal growth experiences and all that kind of stuff. Uh, having fun with each other. You know, like one of the things I was looking for is do we have fun when we're together, when we do stuff together? Do we have fun when we go to the grocery store? You know, things like that. Do we have fun just being together? So, you know, I encourage you to actually have a nice big long list where you get really clear about the criteria of the qualities of the person you're looking for and the qualities of the relational interactions you're wanting with that person. Okay, so those things are really important. The other bit of advice I have is as you're doing your, uh, your partner vision list is when you want, you know, there's things that we want in a partner and there's also things that we don't want in a partner. And it's important to take those things you don't want and look for the other side of it as to what's sort of like the opposite of it, that there are more things that you do want. Because if we, we tend to move towards whatever we look at. So if we go, you know what, I don't want somebody with that trait we are still moving towards that trait, even though we don't want the trait. Okay, so it, we're in a reactive mode to that trait. And sometimes we'll either get more of that trait or we'll swing to the opposite extreme, which is still a reactive place and it's not necessarily very healthy. So what you really wanna do with all of your don't wants is you write down your don't want and then you think about, well, what qualities would somebody have 
that would mean that they didn't have this one, right? So, um, so f I'm trying to think of an example off the top of my head. You know, if you'd want somebody who doesn't smoke, say, so you say, well, what is it? What would you want? Well, I want somebody who, you know, wants to lead, lead a very healthy lifestyle and treat their bodies well. So obviously, if they want to live a healthy lifestyle and treat their bodies well, they're not going to smoke. So that's a, an example of turning a don't want into another set of do want criteria. So anyway, am I being too picky? Uh, generally, I encourage people to be very picky, but to avoid the concrete kind of things that are overly restrictive. So anyway, I hope that was helpful. And I wish all of you to have wonderful partner visions and to get everything that you're looking for. Catch you on the next episode of Love Talk Q&A. Did you like this video? If so, click on the like button below, subscribe to this channel, and spread the love to your friends. And if you have questions about your love life, please submit them in the comments below, and your question just might appear in an upcoming episode of Love Talk Q&A. Also, if you would like to understand the three key blocks to finding love and how to attract your soulmate now, sign up for the free Finding the Love You Want mini course. Well, thank you for hanging out with me. And remember, no matter how long you've been trying, you really can have the life and love you long for. This is Stefan Gonick, international love coach from FindingTheLoveYouWant.com. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time on Love Talk Q&A.